Are we in the middle of a Himalayan arms race? And if we are, who is winning? This question could define our times. India is arming itself for self-defense, for deterrence. China is arming itself for expansionism, for posturing. These are two completely different objectives. The only thing in common is cutting edge technology. On Wednesday, India tested its most advanced missile, the Agni-5. It was fired from the Abdul Kalam Island in Odisha. But the tremors would have been felt all the way in Beijing. Let me tell you why. Agni-5 is a surface-to-surface -surface missile. It was inducted into the arsenal three years back. This missile has a range of 5,000 kilometers. Agni-4 could travel 4,500 kilometers. This one can go another 500. Why is this extra range important? Because now India can strike anywhere in China, the extreme north, the remote east, anywhere. All of China is on Agni-5's radar. Does this make it an intercontinental ballistic missile? Well, not on paper. But for all practical purposes, it is an ICBM, an intercontinental ballistic missile. Agni-5 can theoretically strike targets in other continents like Europe and some parts of Africa. Another big advantage is the accuracy. At 5,000 kilometers, Agni-5 is a sure shot. Plus, it's easy to deploy. In military terms, we call it a canistered missile. So you can pack it, you can transport it and deploy it all inside a capsule or a canister. This also means that you can launch the Agni-5 from a road or a railway platform. It's quick and easy, but lethal. Because don't forget, this is a nuclear-capable missile. It can carry a 1.5-ton warhead. What is the intent behind this missile test? Is it just a message to China? Does it reflect India's growing military prowess? Here's what the Defense Ministry said, and I'm going to quote from that statement. The successful test of Agni-5 is in line with India's stated policy to have credible minimum deterrence that underpins the commitment to no first use. In other words, it's not about attacking, it's about defending. And the timing makes perfect sense. China tested a hypersonic missile in the month of August. And China being China, they did not tell the world about it. Even now, they continue to deny. They say it was not a hypersonic missile, but a space vehicle. How is this technology different from ballistic missiles? For starters, it's much newer. Hypersonic missiles are 21st century technology. Ballistic missiles date back to World War II. But old is not always bad. Hypersonic technology is like a flashy supercar. It's fast, it looks good. But what if you want to go on a trip or go to the supermarket? you'll be much better off with an SUV then. And in this story, ballistic missiles are the SUV. They're more efficient and accurate. So why are countries desperately chasing hypersonic tech? China and Russia have already unlocked it. So has the US. India is also building a hypersonic missile with Russia. It's called the BrahMos-2, a Mark 7 hypersonic missile. Reports say it could be tested by 2025. You could say hypersonic missiles are unpredictable. They travel low on the radar. And more importantly, they can change direction mid-flight, which means they're hard to detect and even harder to intercept. But will they hit the target? That is the key question. The Chinese missile, for example, the one they just tested, missed the target by 32 kilometers. The fact is, hypersonic missiles are untested. But this is an arms race. It doesn't matter if the technology works or not. If your rival has it, you must also have it. Which brings us to the Himalayan arms race. How serious is it? India and China are locked in a fierce border face-off. 18 months, 13 rounds of talks, still no progress. The Chinese side was never interested in a meaningful settlement. They were just stalling. And now we know why. China's showpiece parliament has passed a new border law. What does it say? That China's territorial integrity is sacred and inviolable. It sounds simple enough, but not in Beijing. This is basically a signal to the Chinese military to strengthen their positions, to legitimize incursions, and to reorganize border regions. Does this sound like a country looking for peace? India is urging China to not take unilateral actions. 
Let me tell you what the foreign ministry said. The Chinese border law has provisions to carry out reorganization of districts in border areas. We expect that China will avoid undertaking action under the pretext of this law, which could unilaterally alter the situation in the India-China border areas. Unilateral action, that's a Chinese speciality, by the way. This border standoff is not ending anytime soon. Both India and China have moved rockets to the border. They're test firing lethal missiles. This is not just any arms race, it's a nuclear arms race. And here's how both countries stack up. China has around 350 nuclear warheads, India has 156. What about missiles? China's newest model is the Dongfeng 31. It has a range of more than 8,000 8, kilometers. It's a proper intercontinental missile. India's latest model is the Agni 5, and like we told you, it has a range of 5,000 kilometers. India is also developing the next version, the Agni 6. It will have a range of around 8,000 kilometers. Will these missiles remain in their silos or will they be deployed? Well, that's the question. China's actions make their intention clear. They tested a missile, but they kept it hidden. India, on the other hand, assured the world community of its responsibility. No first use. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.